Hi, welcome everybody. We're going to talk today about chapter 18, the quick check multiple choice. Remember, we are, going to, we are discussing the markets for the factors of production. This is a book of Gregor Manku, Principles of Economics. So, okay. So the first question says, approximately what percentage of U.S. national income is paid workers as opposed to owners of capital and land. So here remember we just mentioned about how we split the total income in the US between the three factors of production, land, capital and labor. So here we have the four options, 30, 50, 70 and 90 percent. So remember that we discussed throughout the book that two thirds of the total income of the ES, it goes to labor. So we are talking more about C, 70 percent. So if firms are competitive and profit maximizing, the demand core for labor is determined by so the opportunity cost of workers time the value of the marginal product of labor offsetting income and substitution effects the value of the marginal product of capital so remember that when we discuss about the demand curve it comes from the expression or the kind of the the value of the marginal product of labor that remembers it, it is equal to the price times the marginal product of labor. So then we know that this one, the value of the marginal product of labor, is actually the demand of the demand curve. Okay? So then a bakery operating in competitive market sells its output for 20 dollars per cake and hires labor at 10 per hour. To maximize profit, it should hire labor until the marginal product of labor is. So remember, when we are talking about competitive market, first we assume that we are in inside a condition that there are many producers and there are many consumers. As a consequence, from all sides, from producers and consumers, both are price takers. So then, here we have the price, which is $20 per cake. Here we have wage, W, which is $10. So, in any market, in any condition, what you want to arrive is like the marginal revenue is equal to the marginal cost. And this is very logical, because if I'm going to spend something else, I hope that this additional unit is going to represent at least the income or the revenue that I'm going to receive. Otherwise, it's better to stop, to just stop production in that part. So here, the marginal revenue at the end is the value of the marginal product of labor right this is like uh, the income that this additional worker is going to bring to my firm and what is the cost of that labor of that work is going to be the wage right so then we know that the value of the marginal product of labor is exactly equal to the price times the marginal product of labor we know then if we have this uh, this equation and this one, and I'm just replace, substitute this value product, uh, marginal product of labor by price times marginal product of labor. I just know that this one, this is the variable that I need to find. I have one equation and I have one variable. So this is a consti consistent uh, problem. So then we have price times marginal product of labor equal to W, and then we just replace price. 20 w 10 then we know that this one that is multiplying can go to the other side dividing right so then i have one over two so here we have the the options a one uh one and a half oh sorry half uh, k per hour two cakes per hour or take or take 
10 cakes per hour and finally 15 cakes per hour. So then remember that the margin of particle flavor is uh, 10 over 20 or uh, 1 1 over 2. So then this is the margin of particle flavor and this is labeled cake per hour. This is how it's measured. Then the additional worker, like the interpretation, is like the additional worker produces a 1 over 2 cake per hour, right? Then this is the answer. 4. A technological advance that increases the margin of product of labor shifts the labor space curve to the space. So remember that this is the labor market. We have the two conditions, the y-axis, which is the price usually. So it's going to be kind of between quotation marks with the variable that is measured um, by money most of the time. So this should be W, wage, and the quantity, which is going to be L, which means labor. So here we have the condition, this is the supply, the white curve, and the red one should be the demand, which is the labor demand curve. So then, here we have the initial condition, when we have the equilibrium, when um, is going to be the same, the supply is exactly equal to demand, the demand is provided at the end of the day um, by the companies and the supply by the workers, right? So then, a technological advance uh, that increases the marginal product of labor, what happened? Remember, this uh, is the demand curve, which is the value of the marginal product of labor equal to price times the marginal product of labor. So if it increases, automatically the value should increase as well. So then I would say that the, the demand, demand curve shift to the right, right? And then this is the D prime. Um, here we have the options. So here what happened with the labor uh, here, labor demand should be this one, so it should be between A and B, and curve to the right, okay? So then we are talking about B answer. Um, the fifth, around 1973 the U.S. economy experienced a significant blank in productivity growth, coupled with A and in the growth of real wages. So here we need to recall the message that we have throughout the chapter, chapter 18, the factors of production, where we have this uh, period, time period, so we have different four um, periods of time. We have from 1959 to 2012, okay, and we split that in, in three, right? from this, this period, so three different periods of time. And the important part here is like, as you see this one, we see an equal increase of 2.A, so in, it increases the growth rate of productivity, how people develop um, the work, maybe this is provided by technological changes, by increasing the human capital, which is measured like more ability, uh, more education, and all this stuff provided this uh, gr growth rate in productivity. And then the theory um, uh, imply that if this increases, the real wages should increase as well. Remember, the real wages is the wage taking into consideration the variation of the prices, okay? So if the prices goes up like faster than the wage, even the wages increase, we should say that the real wage don't increase, right? Or does increase. So that's the point, because this is what really matters. So here we have that, and here we visualize that from this period, from 1973 to 1995, we have that the rate of productivity increases, but we should say that it slows down a little bit, and then the real wages as well. So here we have acceleration, well, our acceleration and slow down, slow down and acceleration or slow down and slow down. So here we, we are more in the part slow down and slow down. It increases or it increased but it was kind of slow down of that uh, growth. Okay. 
The last question says about a storm destroys several factories, thereby reducing the stock of capital. What effect does the event have of fact on my factor market? Here, so here we have the we are talking about the capital market, okay? So remember, we have three factors, and we discussed about labor, land, and this case capital. So the price is in the y-axis. So here it should be R. Most of the time it's considered R because it's kind of the interest rate that you sh you need to pay in order to use the to rent the 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 capital. And here we have the the condition, okay? Here we have the K, which is the amount of capital, okay, the stock of capital. It's kind of difficult to grasp, but we say more like maybe stock machines, plants um, that we have here as capital. Here we have the demand and supply. So here we have the R star and K star. This is the equilibrium. And here we have the supply and demand. When there is a storm, uh, we assume that because it will reduce the stock of capital so we should say that the supply of that stock of capital uh, is going to reduce right so the supply automatically it reduces okay so it goes or shift to the left okay automatically what happened in the capital market due to the scarcity of the capital now the prices naturally go up okay provided by this scarcity of the the um, the lower quantity of capital so here we're in capital prime uh capital apostrophe um that we have here this is the new condition okay but what effects uh, does this event have on factor markets so here we have the labor market so here we have the 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 supply and demand the y axis we have wage and the X axis we have labor. So due to that, the companies they start to uh, demand less work. So this due to this external uh, change of the capital market, we have here a um, lower demand for that labor. So the demand shift to the left. Automatically, this one the quantity of labor and the wage of equilibrium goes down due to this decrease of that so this is like interdependence between the factors and at the end of the day those are kind of uh, derived demands depending on when happening what what is happening on the market per se on the product that they are selling but uh, but also inside the the um, the other factors okay so then uh, here we have the, the capital market the prices goes up and the price goes up and the quant the quantity of the stock of capital which is measured by k will go down and then the labor market we conclude that we have a decrease in the wage and a decrease in the labor so at the end we have these options so here we automatically understand that the wages fall and the rental price of capital rises okay that's all for today i hope you understood thank you for watching my videos please comment i'm working to improve this is subtle this is what i think maybe i'm wrong and i'm more than happy to have your comments and if you subscribe it should be great. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.